Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate um, the second type of lighting, which is using a series of point lights. Uh, when I hit render, you'll see that I've taken the scene back to um, one with no lighting and used all of the low render settings so it's nice and quick. And to create a light that's not uh, a daylight, and still use the mental ray renderer, which is the renderer that I want to use. Um, I go to the Create tab, across to Lights, and I can either do Target Lights or Free Lights, and they function the same way as cameras do, where you provide a target for the light. Um, uh, for this scenario, though, I'm just going to use a free light. All right. You can see here that the same pop-up will occur, and I've got an entirely new file. So just while you're starting out, if there was to, if you were to do daylight systems, and then you were also to do um, uh, nighttime renders, I'd put that geometry in two different files. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's let's click this one on, and there's a whole series of settings to do with that light, and I'm just going to click it into the scene in my top view, and what I'm going to do is move it up into the center of the spheres. Okay. Now when I hit render we should get a little bit of light casting on the scene. There's not too much. You can see that the background's still dark and somewhere in there there's a little spotlight that's actually, or a, a free light, which is distributing light in every direction. Okay. Now I'm just going to open up the environment dialog again which you can do by hitting 8 and I'll preview it here and I'll, I'll just highlight that the exposure value is really low. It's actually set to 2. So if you want that light to spill more in the scene, you can actually drop it. But you'll see that the closer you are, it starts to burn. So, you know, accordingly you might actually take down the highlights. Alright. So just know that the exposure of that light can be controlled there. You can also control the intensity of that single uh, light source in the modifier stack um, under here. So I could actually double the intensity of that light if I wanted to. So you might not use exposure, you might use intensity for lights if you had more than one point light in a scene instead of using exposure which will change the exposure of the entire scene as one thing. Okay, so I'll just render this little segment of the image just so I can show you the difference between an intensity that's been doubled. Alright, so you'll see there that just by doubling the intensity everything becomes a lot brighter. So you're probably wondering if you can do this real time. I'll change that back to 1500. And there is a way, and it gets better uh, in Autodesk release number 2012. Um, but I'll just demonstrate how we can turn one of these into something that r gives you kind of a rough approximation of how things are going to render, or the lighting out of the render. <laughs> to demonstrate this, I'll just um, increase this window, and I'm just going to turn off edged faces here, and you'll see that this just becomes a symbol, and there's that the light within the scene is just the standard default lighting that comes with Max. It's not actually being cast from that light. To show um, a rough view of how the light's going to work, we go to Smooth and Highlights, down to Lighting and Shadows, and hit Illuminate with Scene Lights. Okay, And now we've got a little bit of control. You can see that the shadows aren't too great, though, but it will give you an idea of how it's being spilt. Um, we can also change, there's a few defaults, you can actually have kind of a, a warm glow to the scene using something like that. And note also that we can actually start to put things in such as target spotlights. Okay, So um, I hit target light here in the creation of the lights panel. And I <clears throat> just how I also create a target camera, I can create a target light by dragging it into the scene and what I might do just is del delete that little free light and I can drag this target light into position 
I can put the target at a particular point and by default it's this little spherical light still so if you actually want to change that to a spotlight in the modifiers uh, the light distribution we change to spotlight here okay and then you can change the uh, fall off of that spotlight and how big the hotspot of the beam is and again we've got access to how to change it, the colors and things alright so I'll just uh, change area to render to full and you'll see there that we've got kind of a really soft uh, bit of light that just hits in one spot alright um, you can use a combination of uh, spotlights and uh, uh, point lights and the daylight system, but know that the daylight system is so intense that it will bleed the little lights out, okay? Just as it would in a normal lighting scenario when you have um, in daytime when you actually turn a, a light in your room on, it has very little effect, okay? So remember that we've also got intensities and you can have a combination of point lights as well. Um, and you can clone lights just how you just in the same manner that you can clone um, uh, other bits of geometry. You can clone cameras, and you can clone them by instance in any way that you want. So I've just created just another spherical light here. We've now got two lights in the scene. You can see that it's still very dark. You can also t say you want shadows from one light, but you don't want both lights. You can select the light that you don't want the shadows to be cast from and you can turn them off here in the modifier tab um, and that in that way now I can increase the intensity of it we won't have odd shadows going everywhere of just a little spherical light and we can start to get a little bit more lighting in the scene we can change the background if we want to still by going to the environment effect rollout So there's a whole series of things that you can do to actually light the scene. You can increase the precision of that image. And changing some of these settings here, we can start to render off um, the scene, get a little bit more precision, a little bit more refinement with it. Okay, so I'm not going to let that render because you can see that it's taking quite a lot of time. There's a lot of reflection and two lights in the scene will increase the time quite a lot. Um, well, it rendered just then anyway. So the last thing that you've got to know is uh, not to just render it's this 640 by 480 resolution. You want to go back into the render setup just like we did way back at the start of number or halfway through technical lecture 6. And you want to change the output size to something that's quite large. Alright, a lot of pixels. You want to render out lots and lots and lots of pixels. You then specify a location that you want to render this thing to. Um, give it a name. We'll call it um, Night Shot Balloons. And we want to render as a TIFF. And we can take that TIFF into Photoshop. We can continue to edit it. Or we can lay it out in InDesign directly if you're happy with it. So hit Save. Hit OK there. And the, the, the last thing that I think I should just point out is that there will be a difference between the proportions of your render frame or that the image ratio, so the relationship between that distance and that distance to what you see here, okay? Depending on which monitor you have, you can hit Shift F and it will create what's called a safe frame around your little viewport so it shows you only what you're rendering. And for instance, let's say you don't want it to be 1600 by 1200. Maybe you want it to be, uh, you know, 1000 by 2000. Okay, you'll see that the um, image ratio changes accordingly down here. And then when we hit render, the proportions of this rendering match that which you set uh, in the render setup output and it also matches the um, the proportions of the save frame so you have a good control you have control over how big that image is going to be uh, I'll just cancel that for now anyway and I'll turn my fr save frames back off okay 
All right, so yeah, that's um, that's rendering. Okay, so we've gone through the daylighting system, we've gone through some point lights, and it's up to you how you kind of manipulate or change or start to get a particular style happening. We've gone over some uh, quite a lot of um, modifiers that we have a lot of we can have a lot of fun with, and some of the basics of uh, the environment. All right, so. Uh, We'll see you in the next technical lecture.